What is 3D printing? Well, in order to answer that today, we're bringing in Jordan, Micro Center's very own video guy. Jordan? Hi. I don't know anything about 3D printing, but Andy knows a lot about 3D printing. Yeah, and I thought we could we could just talk today because you're a video guy, you have a very specific interest in the world, and we wanted to talk about how maybe 3D printing uh, could be applicable to a lot of people. So you have one use case here that you've already explored. Yeah, so we made these 3D printed Bowen mount light covers. So they have little Micro Center logos on them. That's our logo, by the way, the little M. And it's kind of cool because then we can put it on our lights, cover them, and they're nice and custom. They look cool. Uh, also, I'm really big into camera stuff, so I would really like to find some sort of way to make 3D printed gizmos and gadgets and hot shoe holders and cages and all kinds of umbrella brackets and other things. We also use 3D printing for that up there, that sweet Micro Center logo. Andy did that one. I think what's important is that Jordan's just one use case for 3D printing. Really, 3D printing has taken the world by storm in the past decade, uh, and you can see it everywhere today from medical uses, especially dental, um, to industrial uses, to prototyping, to architecture, uh, to things that hobbyists might do, depending on what your hobby might be, whether it might be music and you're creating musical accessories, or maybe you even make custom cookie cutters for your cookie business. All of these things and more can be done now with a 3D printer a tool that most of us up until the past maybe eight or nine years might not have had in our own homes. But now, because they've become so affordable and reliable, you can actually get a 3D printer or more and have them in your house. So as Jordan goes down this journey of learning how to 3D print, um, we're gonna talk about how the 3D printer works and we're gonna talk about some of the basics of it as well and what you might need to know before you jump into buying a 3D printer. I guess the big question here is what is 3D printing? So what's this, what's what's happening right here? So this right here is an Ender 3 V3 SE. So a fun name to try to remember, memorize and regurgitate over and over again. But this printer itself is what we consider an entry level printer. And coming in right around $199.99, this could be a great first 3D printer for you to bring into your house uh, and experiment with, or even for businesses to start off with. So right now, it's kind of acting like a really smart hot glue gun, and it's taking this filament material all the way down from the spool to the hot end, and it's moving it around in a predetermined set of moves so that it produces an object. And it does that by moving in a few axes, the X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. And normally what happens is it moves in the first two mentioned axis, the X and the Y, and then it moves up a layer and continues until you have a finished product. Well, it looks like this part's moving around here. Yeah, so this part here that it's printing on top of is called the bed. Uh, and this is a heated bed, which helps with adhesion. And basically this bed will move back and forth on this style printer. It's called a bed slinger printer. Um, on more expensive printers uh, or fancier printers, you might have what's called a core XY uh, mechanical system. And really what's moving there is the head is moving both in the X and Y axis and the bed's just moving up and down. So I can see it and it looks like it's just doing a little bit at a time, just moving all around. How do you, how do you program it to do that? Right, so there's a couple of different ways you can program it to do that. Normally we have to start with a 3D file. Now it's up to you whether you find that file online or somebody gives you the file, or the other option is you can design your own 3D file using an application such as Tinkercad. A lot of people like Fusion 360, or if you're like me and love to work on your iPad with the Apple Pencil, Shaper 3D is a great option as well. If you're not ready to create your own files yet, you might explore something like printables.com or thingiverse.com to find files that already exist out there, a lot of them for free that you can simply download, process using a slicer program, which we'll talk a little bit about, and then transfer over to your 3D printer either with USB, an SD card, sometimes a thumb drive, or more expensive printers often have their own web server built in uh, and Wi-Fi such that you can actually send the file wirelessly from your computer after it's been processed to the printer to start printing. So I can see this little gear moving here. What's that doing? So what you're pointing to right now is the extruder motor or part of the extruder motor. What that is doing is taking the filament and pushing it down to the hot part of the hot end. So it's taking that 1.75 millimeter in diameter filament, which is the most common type of filament, 
and it's pushing it down to a heat block where there is a heater cartridge, which is receiving electrical amperage or whatever to basically heat it up to a specified temperature, which is being monitored by a thermistor or something that monitors temperature and then sends appropriate signals back to adjust the temperature. And then finally, it's getting pushed through a very fine nozzle that's 0.4 millimeters in diameter. So what's this going on up here, right? So this is plastic and it's being fed down into here, but like, what is this exactly? So this is our material, it's called filament. And this filament is PLA plus. This is Micro Center's house brand of filament. And this PLA plus material is a bio-based plastic. So it's actually produced by using corn and it goes through a whole process to turn it into what you see here, this 1.75 millimeter filament. At Micro Center, we carry a number of varieties of filament, including PLA, polylactic acid. We also carry an ABS material, which is similar to what plastic Lego bricks are made out of. We also carry PETG along with some ASA and then other cool materials that even have carbon fiber infused in them. And sometimes we like to get fancy and we add glitter to the material uh, where we have marbled effect filaments as well. Also what's become really popular of recent is two-tone filaments. So basically as you print, there's half of it red and half of it green going into the extruder and it creates a really cool gradient as it's printed out. There's all sorts of types of filament available to use for 3D printing. Some have different strength properties or flex properties that you might want to use depending on your situation. Um, but ultimately, uh, it's great to start out with PLA um, because it is a biomaterial. It's easily reproduced using uh, renewable resources versus petroleum uh, based products. Uh, and then it's also pretty temperature friendly and prints at a lower temperature. Um, and doesn't need in a fully enclosed printer like, let's say, ABS might need. How do you decide the temperature that you want to print at? Is there like a guide or do you just like wing it? Yeah, there's uh, a lot of the softwares that you use to actually process the filament, which are called slicers, have built-in profiles. A lot of times on the filament themselves, on the spools, you'll see a temperature range to test. Um, for the most part though, uh, once you've gotten familiar with a type of filament, that temperature is a good starting place. You might only modify it by three to five degrees plus or minus to get different results. Um, but yeah, normally there's, there's guides built into the slicing software or the software to process your uh, part uh, to kind of have a, a starting point for what type of temperature you're looking for for your filament. Is there a way to benchmark? Like let's say I wanna, I just bought a 3D printer and I want to benchmark it and test it out or standardize or, or check that it's working out okay. Yes, there is a pretty famous print called the Benchy. That's basically a boat. This is the benchmark test. A lot of printers will come with this file pre-sliced or ready to print out of the box. So you can kind of see how well the printer actually works. This print has become pretty much known as the print to test out your 3D printer with. Uh, another pretty typical test that you would do is a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter cube. Um, that's another way to test it and make sure it's working well. Um, a lot of times people get really excited and right out of the right out of the gate want to print um, whatever comes on the printer itself. A lot of the Crealities will ship with a small cat model, um, but the Benchy is pretty much one of the better ways. In fact, there are some competitions out there to see who can print the fastest Benchy and they give you certain criteria that you have to meet. Uh, but the Benchy is kind of the one that, that most people go after. And they're always this size, this, this little size here? Or they're, do they come in this giant size? They're not, yeah, they're not always this size. You can print, the nice thing about 3D printing is you can 3D print things at different scales, right? So if you have something small like that Benchy, you can, through the software, through the slicing software, simply choose scale and scale it up. Now that printer or that 3D print was printed on something a bit larger than this Ender 3 V3 SE that we have here. Um, but yeah, that's kind of one of the neat things about 3D printing is that if you have something that you want to be a different size, it's very easy to do that. It's very cool. So what are, what are some of the applications that you can do with this, right? Like when you tell me that I can print anything I want, okay, fine. But like what? Like what, what can I do? Well, I mean, there's, again, it, like we said at the beginning, like it, it really depends on what your interests are. Mm -hmm. So you've already explored a couple of things to do with cameras and lighting. Um, I do music on the side and there's different music accessories you can print. Uh, my mom uh, prints out cookie cutters and she actually uh, makes custom cookie cutters for her custom cookies. Uh, there's just a myriad of things that, that anyone could conceivably do with a 3D printer. 
it really kind of depends on what your interests and what your hobbies are. And then doing some exploration through sites like printables.com to see what other people have created. Or perhaps you already have an idea of something you want to create, and then it's up to you uh, to be able to model that or work with somebody that can help you model that. So it looks like our print just finished up here. Is it okay to touch it or is it still warm? It's probably okay to touch. It is still probably a little bit warm, but I would say that at this point you can. Um, would you like to try it? Sure. What do All I right. do? Um, so with these, what we do is we pull the bed up. Go ahead and just pull it up the whole way. Ooh. And then go ahead and bend flex the bed and that'll help that release. Yep. Oh uh, yeah, there we go. And then that'll just come right off. Yep. Ooh. This thing's pretty cool, man. Yeah. All right, so I think I have a pretty good idea of what 3D printing is. I want to make something now, so where do we start? Well, I think in our next video, what we'll do is we'll take a pre-existing STL file or 3D printable file, and we'll go ahead and slice it using the slicer, which is appropriate for this printer, and then we'll go ahead and print it. We'll show you how to do everything from loading the filament to actually pressing print and getting your object. Cool. Sounds pretty good. All right, I'm into it. Make sure you comment below and let us know what you think our first 3D print should be. And we'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center. That's here. And make sure you comment hashtag I want a Micro Center near me. If you made it this far in the video, which you probably did. So we got a little two tone whistle here. Wait, start again. It doesn't actually make two tones. I have a one tone whistle here. <laughs>